a very warm day outside by Minnesota standards, but then again, it is still summer. Either way, the AC is working just fine at U.S. Bank Stadium in the Twin Cities. The scene a short time ago, this crowd decked out in purple, and they were in full roar as their guys burst out of the locker room. We're ready for football, folks, as the Vikings get set to do battle with Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. <laughs> Throwing now, Wilson on first down. That's complete to DK Metcalf. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. Okay, so now the question, how did he get that wide open? Well, we both know that he shouldn't because from the time they handed out scouting reports before this game, he was circled, starred, everything. Find him, cover him. But sometimes you can scheme a guy open. You put the receivers in a bunch. Maybe you move some motion. Maybe you put them on the back side of a formation, and all of a sudden you've got a better matchup. Every now and then, the offensive guys, they figure a way to get him open, even with everyone keeping eyes on him. And that's certainly a guy they want to keep trying to scheme open. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. From the shotgun, Wilson. He finds his man, the tight end Olson. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Bring nice methodical opening drive here. They're already in the field goal range. They're in a good spot. You know that people like to take a shot in this part of the field. But at the same time, as methodical as they've been, they might want to run the ball a little bit here, too. And just on the outskirts of the red zone, they have options now. Either way, though, they've come out with a purpose. He'll have a first down inside the 10. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. Touchdown. 25 yards. And the Seahawks take the ball down the field and score on the opening drive. Throughout the game, we're going to track so many different statistics. But one is becoming increasingly in vogue. Explosive runs, runs of 20 yards or more, and we just saw one right there to open this game. Now we'll see how the other team responds because when you get a play like that against you this early in the game, you gotta feel like your back's against the wall a little bit. Yeah, the pressure now increases on you because your first thought is we have to answer right now. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And he returns this to the 22. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. The Vikings take over first and 10 at their own 22-yard line. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 22. He'll look to throw right away. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawks defense. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Second and 14 as they've got work to do here after the sack. Another try after the first down sack. Cousins. He'll find his receiver. That's Chad Beebe. Cousins. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. 
And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so offense has to be ready each and every time to either equal or try and get us ahead and try and keep us ahead. Pressure too much that time as Cousins goes down. Jaron Reed able to get him down for a loss of 11, and it brings up fourth down. So on fourth down, Britton Colquitt on the punt. The Seahawks have David Moore back deep. They'll score that a 36-yard punt, and it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. That's Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. And they'll be looking to make this a two-score advantage. Had the touchdown on their first drive, Charles. Hey, they can get up two scores here on the road. That's a heck of a start. And not only have they thought about it, I wonder if they visualized it. I remember playing, and they used to turn the lights out in our meeting room and run through a situation like this and say, just think about what it would be like to be up on the road and take the crowd out of it. Maybe they did some of that. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Nice little nifty play for him there. Yeah, that's the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backs out of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, hey, we got everybody cut. Oh, he just snuck out there, and they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? And they were able to do that there. Nice pickup on first down. And he's going to get this inside the 30. First down Seattle on a pickup of 13. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that will pull you out of that spot they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for them. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside, ball's delivered, gets both feet down for the completion. Complete on the quick throw to Moore. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Seahawk football here to start quarter number two as they go to work on a first and goal. Wilson will throw again. End zone caught. Touchdown, Seattle. Wilson connects with Tyler Lockett. And the Seahawks add on to their lead. It's not much as perfect in football, but that's about as close to it as you're going to get. Score, force a punt, score again. And both drives were impressive. The opening drive was, that last one was. Now on the other side, though, what's your psyche? You're really behind the eight ball. You got to make sure you just hold in there. Survive the early storm, relax a little bit, and try and get back to your game plan. It's way too early for panic. Nothing. After the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. They're staring at a two-touchdown deficit, 14-0 the score as they regroup with first and 10.
They start the drive with Cole. And he's got Rome. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45 yard line. Give him 22 yards. And that's also where they snapped it from the 22. Sometimes those lines that are drawn on a grease board or in a playbook, they come to life <laughs> out on the field, don't they? And we just saw that that outside handoff to the right. That right tackle, he gets excited for that call, doesn't he? He does, because he just wants to dominate his guy and say, listen, I was the point of attack. I took care of business. That's why you're able to get downfield and add all those yards to your total. Yeah, really nice gain there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Those are the plays this defense needs with the deficit they're facing. It certainly is, and they've got to continue to swarm the football and hope that someone, while they're holding up the ball carrier, can get in there and rake it and lock it free. They need to get some takeaways as well. Now he dumps this off over the middle and taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 12 yards there and a first down. Well, these guys have definitely been out cutting the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. On play action, Cousins. And he's got the hook up here. It's Kyle Rudolph. A gain of six there on first. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Draw play, Cousins to Cook. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. But when you go from second and four to third and three, that just tells you who won that battle on the last play, huh? Yeah, first round went to the offense, second round the defense. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. Got an open man finding Jefferson. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Cousins in step with Jefferson that time. First down, Vikings. First and 10 at the 26-yard line. Now Cook, he's got it off the draw. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Tackle the tackle made by K.J. Wright. It's a gain of five. Brings up second and five. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. From the gun, here's Cousins. That's complete to the receiver, Thielen. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. And that'll be incomplete. Dalvin Cook is running back, the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Working out of the gun, Cousins. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range. So now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. He's going to get this one down to Cook. And he's going to come up well shy of the first here as the tackle's made right around the 12. Come on. 
So Cousins heads to the Vikings sideline and on is Dan Bailey to try the field goal. Bailey's kick is good. And they will get themselves on the board here at 14 to three. So a dozen plays on that drive CD, but in the end, it yields just the three points. Well, they were able to keep the defense on the field for a long time, but let's be honest about it. That's about as unsatisfying a drive as you're going to get. 12 plays and you only get three points out of it. Not quite the ending they were looking for. take over offensively and still plenty of time remaining here in the half more than a minute and we'll see if they just want to protect that lead or try to add on to it well with as much time as is left on the clock I would imagine it would be the latter I think they're going to try and add on to it so what they're going to tell the team is very simply if you can get out of bounds after making a play downfield terrific if you can't everyone hustle to the line of scrimmage either run another play or clock it and start over again. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. They'll contain him to just four, second down. In order for a screen pass to break big, a lot of things have to come together and be well executed, but all it takes is one small thing to go wrong and keep it from being a big game. Throwing again on second down. Wilson, here's Carson with a catch out of the backfield. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. An extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. From the gun, it's Wilson. He may try and run for this. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. The rushing numbers for Wilson may be down from earlier in his career, but he's still a threat to go, showing it there, picking up the first down. The Seahawks first down. Gun. Here's Wilson. Underneath, he's got Olsen. He's got the first down and more inside the 40. And finally, down at the 36-yard line. 19 yards there on the catch and run. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. Now a signal and a timeout call as it comes with nine seconds to go in this first half of play. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. From the left hash, this from 53 yards out. And this one is no good. He missed it. And this score will stay right where it is. Now listen, now, no kick from 50-plus is a gimme, but here you're indoors in a dome. You'd think ideal conditions. Yeah, it's one that he would expect himself to make, not just us expecting him to make it. Over the years, my theory is very simple. The athletic ability of kickers continues to get better and better. Check their backgrounds. They were all county, all state, and other positions, not just soccer players. These guys expect themselves to be great as well. And now this throw incomplete, and that is how this first half will come to an end. So we have reached halftime here in an 11-point contest. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! 
And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. Now come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. At their own 20-yard line. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at the 20. Off of play action, he'll look to throw. Complete, Jefferson to target. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. Oh, that was a pretty route right there because it's all about finding a window on a route like that. He lined up on his left, ran the deep in route over the middle, and the ball was right where it needed to be. Really good trust between quarterback and receiver. Really good completion. And he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. No gain. We talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. And the Seahawks defense gets to him, and they bring him down. Jaron Reed able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. So one quick, easy analysis about why they've struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. That one into the hands of Thielen, complete. And he'll be taken down well before the first at about the 36-yard line. It'll be a gain of eight, but it also lead to a fourth down. Great change up there on the route. It got that inside release, made it a successful pitch and catch. Well, the first thing you want to do is have him thinking that you're going outside. Make a move in that direction. Then you really don't run the route against the whole body of the defender. You run against a half of him, and the inside half... And he took it right across his face, got inside, and won that route in a big way. 36 yards on the punt with no return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Now we'll see what this Seahawks offense has in store with their first possession of the second half. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they took their offensive guys. Can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Thirty-yard line. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Carson. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Seven yards there and a first down. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork. And they add a little bit of power. And you find a way to pick up first downs. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Operating from the gun. Wilson steps away. And now he's going to use his legs. That one a broken play, but it ends up being a good play. The scramble goes for 20. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 43. <laughs> Now they'll throw it with Wilson. And caught left side, Olsen. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players. Somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. They completed the screen on the perimeter, but boy, that was textbook defense. Exactly as you're taught to play against a wide receiver screen, and they snuffed it out for a loss of yardage. 
They missed a field goal on their last drive. Here they need something to even get into field goal range on third down. Here's Carson. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Give him a yard on the play, and he's definitely short. It'll be fourth down in a few inches. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. On the left hash, officially it's called a 51-yard attempt. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. And with things looking pretty good on the scoreboard, they're going to keep the offense out there and go for it here on fourth. They run for it with Carson. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. They only got a couple, but a couple's all that they needed as they convert on fourth. Starting to look like this drive, it may be the final nail in the coffin. Well, this is why you work out so hard, right? This is why you spend all that time in the offseason. This is why you have those OTAs and mini camps for these situations, these scenarios, to run someone into the ground and secure a victory. Wilson on target there to Moore. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. Another nice pickup through the air. And I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon. But with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. On second down now. It's Carson down right around the 25. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves him with a third and three. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where there'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. And he finds a man, it's Olsen. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. The two veterans there, Wilson to Olsen for a Seattle first down. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And this time they were waiting for him as he'll be knocked down before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. Brandon, this is clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. Now on second and 13. Wilson, that's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. Wilson's They'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. The Seahawks on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and four. From the gun, Wilson. The quick slant caught. And the Seahawks are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? That's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. They'll try to run with Carson. And he'll actually lose a little bit of yardage here. Back to the two. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. Two now, here's second and goal. They run again with Carson. And he's across the chalk into the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks. Chris Carson, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Seahawks find a way to stretch their lead.
Is it okay if I break one of our rules, partner, which is to never call a game over until it's over? Because this certainly feels like it's over after that drive. Yeah, that was spirit crushing, wasn't it? And now you can, you just kind of felt the air go out of the balloon. Yeah, they were fighting so hard to stay in there, and they knew they had to stop them on that drive. But when they were unable to, I, I think you're exactly right. You could see them sag on their sideline, and I think this one might just be over. Jason, and after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped it to 23-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for pride? Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's Make get out of here and do something some <laughs> other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. You got the big lead defensively. Willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. To throw again on second down. Cousins. And it's a fumble. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And that should just about do it. They return it to the end zone. Sealing it with a defensive touchdown. Well, there's just about a minute left in this game, and they're still taking into the end zone. And you know they could have taken a knee there, but they decided to play this one all the way out. And I think their philosophy is, we're going to give you Jason everything Meyer we've got. If we just go ahead and take a knee now, we're actually showing you disrespect that way, like taking pity on you. They're not about to do that to their opponent. His and his kick good. is right through. Makes the score Seahawks 28, Vikings 3. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. Now K.J. Osborne. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in the game like this and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And the coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. Boy, how good has this defense been seemingly all game long? I really think right from the first snap, I think you're really on to something there. And this passing game, it just can't get off the ground. And that play, it wound up losing yardage. And Rudolph has it, the tight end. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. It'll be a nickel look here for the Seahawks on third down. 
Cousins. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And he backs it away and it falls down incomplete. What we've seen so far in this game, they are not going to allow a big shot over the top. You can have whatever you want underneath. They'll give you that, but they're not going to let you beat them deep. And no move to get the offense off the field. They'll stay put on fourth and one. Running for it. Here's Cook. And down he goes with the stiff arm. Utilized effectively there. And it helps him move the sticks. But no reason not to try it there. They do indeed convert on fourth. Four yard line. The Vikings going to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. Let's just be frank. They're playing for pride at this point. <laughs> that's, that's all that's left because victory, not a chance now. And I can't wait to see how they actually go about doing it because there are a lot of people watching the body language of the guys on the field now. And if they call plays they want executed, they need to do that and do it really well. Otherwise, there could be repercussions. We'll see how they handle the waiting moments of this one. Seven yards to pick up there. It's a gain of seven. Brings up second and three at the 40-yard line. So the victory here for Seattle. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. From Minneapolis, so long, everybody.